So good morning everybody and welcome to the Wellbeing Ritual this another sunny Monday morning. How lucky are we? So um, let's take a moment to settle into our surroundings. If you're using an essential oil then feel free to add that to the palms of your hands. I'm, I've got my frankincense um, but work with whatever you want to work with. There is a reason why frankincense has traditionally been used in uh, religious ceremonies. It's because it has this incredible capacity to heighten your awareness whilst calming you down. So most it's the only essential oil that can do that. Most essential oils either calm you down and make you feel sleepy or they heighten your awareness and make you feel more stimulated and awake. But uh, frankincense is this extraordinary middle ground where your heart rate slows, your breathing slows, but your senses and your awareness become heightened, which um, is ideal for keeping you awake in a very dull church service or um, to keep you awake when meditating. So that's why it's such a, a powerful and a popular oil for those sort of activities. Okay, so we're going to do a breath practice this morning, just for 20 minutes, and uh, and this whole week is dedicated to the second chakra, Svadhisthana, which is all about the pelvis. So I've got to tell you, I am a very happy person when I'm in Svadhisthana chakra. This is my favourite, nah, not my favourite, heart as well. But between heart and Svadhisthana, they're, they're the, my favourite chakras. Um, the pelvis is this long lost territory of the, the, certainly the female body, I don't know, I think men are more uh, naturally attuned to their pelvis than perhaps we are. But, um, you know, th this isn't an accident, it's been culturally drill drilled into us to sever our ties to our pelvis. So, um, it, which is interesting because in fact the pelvis is home to so much of our creative energy, it is home to our resilience and our courage. And so it's, it's, it would be a real shame to lead your life disconnected from your pelvis. Um, in terms of the chakra, Svadhisthana is to do with flow. It's the watery elements of your life, so emotion. I don't know if you've ever taken time to notice how feelings move through you, but it's a very wave-like process. Sometimes it's a tidal wave and you literally feel it move up your body and down again. Other times it's more subtle than that, but the, um, the, the reference to the tides and the um, expansion and contraction of your breath really um, align themselves perfectly with, with the sensitivity to your emotions because they are a watery, watery thing. And where the root chakra is about your family and where you were born on this planet, Svadhisthana is more about who you choose to spend your life with. So it's your friends, your relationships, and it's your behavior and, and what you, you select, what, what you edit as your behavior. What makes you feel good? What makes you feel bad? Um, so it's the polarities of life. And, and for me, that's, that's such a, a crucial part of the compass of decision making and getting through creating your life in a way that makes it as glorious as it can be, is to just moment to moment connect to, does this nourish me? Or does this deplete me? How does this make me feel? When I say these words to my friend, how do I feel? How do I feel when I eat this thing? How do I feel when I wear this essential oil, when I make this purchase? How is it feeling in my body? And that is such a great guide because if you're always steering to the things that make you feel good, you really do yourself no harm and I know the instant response is but I'm just going to eat chocolate biscuits every day for the rest of my life but that actually isn't true because it doesn't actually feel good after a while so if we devote ourselves to Svadhisthana Chakra and to our capacity to trust the instincts of this feels good this doesn't feel good truthfully then we're always going to behave in a way that supports ourselves supports the planet and supports one another so Svadhisthana is an amazing chakra to connect in with. You may, we'll do the circles and we'll come into the body and then we're going to lie down or you can lie down or you can stay sitting up. And I'm going to do, I can see on the Facebook live that there's some uh, guys watching. I'd nice to see you. Um, 
usually I teach this one for women. So I'm going to use the language as if I'm teaching this to um, women, but you can just steer it towards your anatomy if you are a different gender. Okay, so let's start by closing our eyes, softening the body, letting the shoulders drop away from the ears. In your own time, at your own pace, take three breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth to help you arrive. Your timing is perfect for you. You really don't need to worry about what pace anyone else is doing. Third breath for me. And dropping your chin very slightly down towards your chest. And we'll take semicircles, so dropping right ear over to right shoulder, keeping the chin tucked down, lowering down and then exhaling, and then moving across left ear to left shoulder. An early morning practice is never going to be the most dynamic practice. It's definitely about being cautious and respectful of the tweaks that need to be had. Okay, and then coming back up to center and maybe taking a semicircle over the top. And watching that we don't drop the head back. We want to come up high and over. moving in any way that feels good for you. Take the shoulders up towards your ears as you inhale, roll them back and down as you exhale. Finding all the clunks and the creaks, smiling to yourself. It's literally like we're shrugging off anything that doesn't really suit us anymore. And then taking the elbows and circling, or maybe taking full arm extensions, depending on how much room you have in your space. Seeing if you can very deliberately thread breath into the movement. So the inhale is coming up and the exhale is back and down. Slowing it down to make it feel as good as it can possibly feel. And then resting your hands on your knees. So you can choose to have your palms facing down, holding onto your knees. That gives you quite a nice anchorage. Or you might prefer to have your palms facing upward, which feels more receptive. It's entirely, they're both great. You can't go wrong. Inhale as you roll your heart forwards to the side, exhaling back and to the side. Taking the Sufi roll, but slowly. And then switching directions. How is the spine feeling? How's the lower back and the pelvis feeling? How are the shoulders and the shoulder blades feeling? And then coming back to centre. So at this point you might choose to lie down or stay seated. It's entirely up to you. Just make sure you feel super comfortable and supported. You don't want to be wasting any energy thinking about how you could or checking that you're staying up nice and straight. You want your spine to be straight whichever position you come into. And you're going to lay your palms down flat on the, um, if you feel where your pelvis is, you have this iliac crest, which is this delicious curve over the top of the pelvis, um, your hips. See if you can find that iliac crest. And then just lay your palms down inside that iliac crest. So for a woman, you're directly above the ovarian space. 
palms flat. It should feel super comfortable. And you'll have heard often in any yoga class the reference to Mula Bandha. And this is the gentle contraction of the pelvic floor. So if you take your awareness specifically here to your perineum and imagine a lifting, a drawing in. If you did last week's Thursday yoga class, then you spent a bit of time getting to know Mula Bandha. And then noticing your breath. We're breathing in and out, both of those through the nostril. You might be able to sense the movement of air through the nostrils. You might feel the temperature difference. As you're calling all your awareness back to your body to be fully present. With a curious mind and a gentle smile. We're going to let the breath start to move through us like the ocean tide. So as you inhale, you're going to draw that breath in through the nostrils and it's going to travel all the way down through the spine, down, 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 down into the deepest part of the pelvis. So that's like the, the draw of the ocean as the waves pull back, coming down as you inhale. And then as you exhale, like the waves pushing forwards, you're going to bring your breath up through the spine, up out of the nostrils. So the inhale is the pull down to the very root of the pelvis. And the exhale is the movement upwards through the spine and out through the nostrils. A very deliberate breath. You might have the muscles of the throat gently contracted for Ujjayi so that you also get the audible quality of the breath. And this may feel like a very cerebral and imagined practice as you visualize the inhale drawing into the pelvis, the exhale moving upwards and out. Or it may be very felt sense, you might be able to actually feel the truth of this movement, the inhale drawing into the pelvis and the exhale flushing through, rinsing through the spine and out through the nostrils. And now as you take that next inhale, you're drawing in, you're feeling the pull of the tie down into the pelvis. And you're gonna hold there for a little while, spend a few moments in the pelvis, and then exhale, flush through, and breathe out. So you're breathing in, and then spending a bit of time with your awareness deep in the pelvis. What do you feel, what do you sense? And you're allowed for the answer to be, I feel nothing. That's just as valid as the response, I feel sunrises and dolphins and everything delicious. All of it is perfect. And then we're gonna to start to direct that awareness so continuing with the inhale, drawing into the pelvic bowl, feeling that tidal pull take you all the way down. As you hold, 
with your awareness in your pelvis, draw it over to the left hand side. So you're going directly beneath the palm of the left hand. Noticing what you feel, exhaling as you flush through, rinsing as you go. Inhaling to draw down and in, coming over to the left hand side beneath the left palm. What can you sense? What can you feel? Are there any textures or temperatures? Exhaling as you rinse through. Let's do that five more times, riding your personal wave of your personal breath. No time frame is correct or incorrect. Just your breath, your movement. Pausing at the end of the inhale to sense into, to feel into the left hand side of the pelvis. It's almost like you're shining a torch of light around the nooks and the crannies. very deliberately riding your breath with your awareness. One more time over to the left hand side. And this next time you're going to ride that tidal pull of the inhale down into the pelvis. And this time as you hover and wait in that pause, you're going to move your awareness over to the right hand side. So beneath the palm of the right hand, this is the landscape that you are exploring. Exhaling and flushing through. Inhaling as you draw in and over to the right hand side. So this is the ovarian space. It's actually not even tied to the organs of the ovaries. The energy of the ovaries exist regardless of the physical presence of the organs themselves. Taking five more breaths like this, your opportunity to explore the feeling, the sense, the texture. Sometimes things feel soft and rounded, other times they might feel harder edged. It might feel light, it might feel dark, warm or cold. And you're entirely safe to drop into your imagined sense. This is no classroom where rationality needs to lead. This is the mysterious world of subtle energy. Your imagination is just as powerful as your rational mind. So feel free to dance your imagination around the right hand side of the pelvis. One more time. Rinsing through the body up through the spine as you exhale. On the next inhale, let's come down to the very heart of the pelvis. So for a woman, this is the, the womb space. And feel how that is connected to the left hand side and the right hand side. And perhaps you might feel that one side is dominant to the other. This is just as valid for the gentlemen as it is for the women. Where is the dominance? Where is the softness? 
Where is it easy to feel into? Where is it less so? Continuing to ride those waves of breath. exploring around for yourself this internal landscape so incredibly powerful and crucial inviting her back into the wholeness of yourself so we very physically viscerally invite all parts of ourselves from all times and all places back to this present moment where we are safe to be whole. And with a softness across the face, allowing a gentle smile, let the breath return to normal. And cast your mind across some of the things that you're thankful for right now. And the reason why you're thankful for them I'm thankful for this practice, for bringing me back to my body because it feels good. I'm thankful for this community, this group of incredible people who show up for themselves each morning because it feels good. I'm grateful for the capacity to define our worlds, our actions, our choices our friendships and our words always moving in the direction of what feels good. Ultimately always returning to love, the essence that is truly us. And bringing your hands to your to your heart center or up to your face wherever feels good dropping your forehead down in a gentle bow as we close with the word namaste. The love inside of me sees the love inside of you. We say that to each one of us here and all sentient beings of love on this earth. Namaste.